Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Now, today I've got several things that I want to share with you. We're going to be working on the big K&T, like we have been for the last few weeks. There's still a lot to do, so let's go in the shop and get started. Alright guys, so I guess for now, what we're going to do is try to pull the motor out of this thing. And... It's basically locked up. I just think it's dirty. You know, that's just an assumption, but uh, that's what I believe. And I've also run into one major issue on this machine, and it's fairly major. Um, it's going to take a fairly substantial amount of work to repair, and we'll get into that more in a minute. Uh, you know, it's it's always something, but uh, you know that's the way it goes when you work with 70-year-old equipment. So. Let's get the motor out of this thing. We'll look at it, and then we'll talk about uh, an upcoming repair that I'm going to have to do to this thing. All right, so and here's the motor cover door, and this is the shaft that you actually lock the door with or close it. You know, lock it. I want burglars to get in there. Anyway, the handle's broken off, and I'm going to have to make a new handle, but luckily the piece that actually locks is still there so really I'm just gonna have to make a shaft and you know <laughs> this is off a water spigot or a actually a ga old gas regulator I'll remove this lettering and uh, maybe maybe not anyway adapt this to a shaft I think it'll actually look pretty good I think uh, painted and for anybody who's wondering yes, this machine is going to get a paint job um, in The process of cleaning this machine hard, you know, of course I've broken off any paint that was any bit loose So yes, it's going to be painted. It'll look good when it's done um, I'm not worried about appearance right now. I'm worried about functionality. So let's get this motor out of here. I think uh, It's going to be pretty dang heavy um, but I think I'll be able to slide it out. We'll see. Uh, let me get you down here where you get a better angle and you know, we'll get this thing out. I've already got the belts off. <laughs> Alright, so even if this motor operated perfectly and needed nothing, it would still have to come out of here. Um, those of you who followed this project a little in the past will know that I showed that it that the motor plate that this thing... Wow, that's a random bolt to be sitting in there. Uh, that uh, this motor swings on has got a broken pivot, so it has to be fixed anyway. So, I am going to... I right, got one of the bolts out. Get these out. And I'll go to the other side. It has two more. And then, we'll slide this thing out a bit. Hopefully I can get to the uh, wire box. Or the pecker head that's actually what they're called I believe um, and unwire it okay. Uh, get this thing where I can access the wiring here. Hopefully, the broken piece of that pivot is laying down in the bottom here. That would sure be nice. But you can't see in there to, to see if it is. So after we get this motor out, we'll look. I'm going to unwire this guy. This guy is going to have to also be rewired to run on 220. Three phase. I think it's 480 right now. Stick some cardboard in there to insulate it from that cap, maybe? Something? Okay. best shape ever was those wires let me uh, get you a better angle 
You see that? I have to really be careful. I'm gonna wire this thing up and make sure everything's good and insulated and uh, stuff. So I'm just gonna pull the tape off these. I'm gonna. But yeah, there's no reason for me to write anything down, to be honest. Uh, so I'm just gonna pull the tape off, disconnect it, and then we'll pull this out. All right, so I've pulled all the tape off these, but before I cut anything loose, I'm, I just made sure that all my wires are tagged, and these have little uh, metal tags on them. Um, everyone does that way, so I can I can cut this loose and safely, you know, uh, uh, be able to get it wired back. If they did not have labels on them. You know, it'd be a lot easier to figure out what wire is what now, especially if you cut them all apart, uh, than it would to be later. So, make sure that your wires are identified and kept together. Uh, it's just easier now than it would be later. So, yeah, see the little metal tags? Get this thing outside. Wow. Looks heavy. Get out of the way. So right off the bat, I see that it has a broken foot, um, and it is not locked up, but it's uh, horribly grungy. Uh, let's go, let's go look in the casting, see if that piece is still there, and see if we can find that broken pivot eyelet, and you'll get a better look at it. Yeah, it's there. Still attached to the base plate. Um, at least the foot is, and a lot of goo and junk. Look at all that. That's what gets in those motors and uh, can ruin them. Let's see if we can. I would like to find. See, that's the broken eyelet. See, that should not do that. So I'm going to have to get this pivot off. I hope that it's in there. That'll make the repair easier. piece of something. I believe this machine has been dropped or something at one point or else that wouldn't be broke in the foot. So it's had a probably a pretty good jar which you know not surprising. Anyway I'll look through that junk and uh, clean all this out and we'll get this off here. I think, and I found 
the broken piece to the motor pivot and uh, I think that'll make it much easier to repair. The only thing I didn't find was the other pin but it's no problem. Look at all the goop. I'm gonna help. <laughs> I think you're helping. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Go on. Don't you get that. Don't you. <laughs> Yeah, carry it off. I'm trying to carry off my bolts. Well, I am finally buttoning up the back of the casting here for the coolant system and uh, using basically, well, not basically, it is the same gasket material that I used on the uh, oil filter. I don't want this thing to leak. This stuff's Although it's got paper backing on it right now, it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty soft stuff. Decided to rain off. My motor's out there. Luckily, I had some plastic on hand. I don't think it hurt it, but I prefer not to get it soaked. thing looks rough. Right, this motor bracket is not as clean as it's ever been. But clean as it's been in a long time, that's for sure. And I'm super glad I found that extra, or that uh, piece that's broken off. So that'll allow me... <clears throat> Originally I was thinking I was going to have to make this whole top. Uh, but now, you know, that's not the case. So... I'll just clean it extremely good. I'll burr it out real heavy, all but uh, a couple small strips so I can keep my original bore size and alignment. And then uh, just braise it. Uh, I'm not going to be able to heat this whole piece, so I'm just going to take a chance. I mean, it's a motor bracket. You know, uh, and uh, braise it as is. You know, just really good and clean and braise it hot. Shouldn't crack or anything. So this thing is... I mean, that's an inch thick. Should be good. Hope. I think this was a not a great casting. Uh, some of this material in here grinds away really easy, like dust almost, and then some of it grinds hard. When I get down to a good shiny stuff, it, it gets hard, but uh, you know, I'm not sure. I hadn't run into this before, but it's grinding funny. Like uh, there's soft spots in here. Well, I think it's time to try to repair this bracket. We're going to just braise it up with uh, some standard Lincoln brazen rods. And uh, what I've done here is just V'd it out fairly heavy. I don't know that I've even quite V'd it out enough, but I think I have. Being thick as it is, I want to be able to get my torch tip in there and uh, you know, get that uh, braze all the way up to the, to the you know, bottom of the joint. And uh, I left just the slightest bit of the original surface here where it was broke out. That way I can still maintain the original alignment. 
and uh, you know spacing. It's just uh, it's just a loose fit. So that's all it is. I'm going to heat it, preheat it with just propane because that's a lot cheaper than oxygen and acetylene, and then I'll start braising it. Plus, this heats it a lot slower. Hopefully, I don't regret doing this. Got this uh, backside tack. It's kind of hard to film and do this at the same time. And this thing takes a lot of heat. I had to change to my brazen head just to get it, or my cutting head just to get it hot enough. I don't have a full torch set. So all I'm doing is tacking it good on both sides. That way I can uh, flip it around without worrying about it moving. Try not to overheat it. This side. Raising this real thick stuff's not real easy. fine line between hot enough and not hot enough and too hot. stick in this corner sometimes you get that you know you get a place that you've probably overheated it's what it seems like anyway you don't want to break it just don't want to take I don't know that I'm just assuming I'm doing this a few times and getting stuff probably a little too hot
going to be. Not bad. The other side looks a little better. It'll be good enough, even though it's not perfect. All right, now I'm going to take this thing outside and spray it down with a water hose, and I think we'll be good to go. I'm not going to do that. That turned out okay. Not too bad. Turn the other side's real nice. I like it. And uh, uh, this side's okay. It's this corner. You know, got it uh, too hot. It's always the corners that give you issues anyway, so I'm not surprised. But uh, I think I got a good joint here, so should uh, should be fine. We'll clean it up. It should already be basically to size. You know, it's a pivot for a motor plate, so uh, should be good, I think. Clean up this mess, man. I gotta get some more raisin rods and this is what I got <laughs> I have to put all those together at least I'll get one out of it these are just cheap from uh, you know a parts store they work I mean they're good enough for this kind of stuff you don't have to have super strong stuff for this kind of application I really think this is going to be good You and Chloe. Well, look at this mess. Complete chaos in here. I pushed everything over in order to, you know, work on this machine and stuff. What are you doing, girl? Uh, this is cooled overnight, so it should be good to go now. All we gotta do is clean it up and, uh, you know, remove all the excess and get all the flux off of it. That flux can be hard to get off of there. Now my motor's still outside. I covered it with plastic. Uh, it's, it's early in the morning. I just got up. Um, I did not get to work on that thing yesterday. Um, me and the wife and kids went to a movie. And, uh, yeah, I lost some time. I didn't lose any time, but lost some shop time. I usually don't leave this place, which is not a great thing. But, uh, I leave it to go to work every day, like everybody else, and, uh, yeah, so let's clean up this motor and this motor plate. Turned out alright. Not too bad. Could be, could have been worse. Um, sometimes stuff don't like to, uh, to bond. But uh, this one did pretty good. Missed a little air. And then a little over here on the corners, like I showed you. Not too bad, though. It'll be fine. Looks pretty good. And just cleaning out these holes. That flux in them and stuff. It should hold. Anyway. It's always the corners. Always. There we go. Motor plate is done. I'll just put a little paint on that. That'll be fine. Well, I don't know where to start on something like this. So, what I'm going to do is just blow off all the gunk that's on the outside. Engine 
I'm going to start putting in hardwood floor in the house today. I've been putting that off for a couple of years. I think the wife's had enough of me putting it off. Well, I'm making actually pretty good progress, and you may accidentally bump up against this thing and not get completely covered in grease. And it's still a long way to go, but it's definitely looking a lot better. This fan is filthy. It uh, has picked up a lot of goo over the years, a lot of grease and dirt. It's uh, right up near the door of the casting on the machine, too, so it's going to see the most up front. And that's where it was dirtiest. But let's talk about, I'll try to explain to you my major problem that I found on this machine. And I hate to even talk about it out loud. It really, it sucks. I'll say that. Uh, but worrying about it won't change it. The only thing that will change it is me fixing it. So let me take you in here and I will show you, or I'll explain to you because it's so hard to see I can't hardly see it but I'll show you at least everything I can about what's wrong with this thing all right so when I went and looked at this machine you know I did a once over of it uh, it was outside under a tarp so of course I didn't hear it run or anything and I wouldn't even wanted to run it in the condition that it was in you know the belt and uh, just I wouldn't have wanted to really move the table much or anything you know so it wasn't that big a deal. It was obvious, like I said, this thing had set for a long time. But I did notice one thing when I went to go look at this machine, and that is that, you know, the clutch lever felt funny to me. You know, and I remember thinking this, man, that clutch lever feels awful light. Uh, but never, having never run one of these machines before, I just assumed that that's the way it was. Now, when I got this machine home, I looked over it really well. And I moved that clutch mechanism and I opened the door on the side of this where the belts run, where the clutch is. And I noticed that when I moved the handle that the bell that pushes little fingers and, you know, sandwiches the clutch plates together wasn't moving. And I'll show you that in just a second. But again, having never run one of these machines before, I thought, well, maybe it has to be running. But in the back of my mind, I was... You know, everybody's probably been there. In the back of my mind, I was thinking, you know, something could be up with that. Well, it is, and I just really found out for sure uh, yesterday, and I want to bring you around to the side. I want to show you what I found and tell you what I'm going to have to do to, to fix it. All right, now here's, I just call it a bell because it kind of looks like a little bell, and it's got sloped edges and when this bell pushes out it squeezes on these fingers and sandwiches the clutch plates together and that's what uh, transmits the power from the motor inside to the to the gears now i was looking at this thing and i noticed like i said when i moved the clutch lever that this thing wasn't moving but it is now but watch so i'll engage it you can see that uh, it pushed out and squeezed the clutch plates but when i disengage it, it stays engaged. I took a rubber hammer and I tap it and it, you know, releases. Well, the problem is that I've looked in the parts breakdown and there's a, it's a rack and pinion system what runs this. There is a gear on the hand uh, uh, operated lever up there that runs on a uh, rack that moves side to side. Well, that shaft, it's a simple shaft. It has some gear teeth on it, of course. It steps down and then pins onto a fork that moves in and out. Well, I can barely see it, but through this access cover, you can see that that shaft is broken right at the shoulder, right where it would break, uh, where it necks down and pins to that fork. So... When I engage the clutch, it pushes against that broken, the two shafts butt up and they operate like they should. But when I disengage it, it doesn't pull this back in. So it's going to require a pretty major teardown. Now, I'm not happy about this. I don't think anybody knew that this was broken. I think that in the moving of this machine, probably when the you know motor mount and stuff got broken on this thing, this is just an assumption. I, you know, uh, that this thing got jarred good, it could have slid off a fork 
lift or something and jammed the clutch lever handle and that could have broken it. That's what I think happened anyway. You know, I, I don't think that, uh, I don't think that it's been broken and operated. Um, I think that it got broken probably in the moving, but anyway. So, in order to fix it though, it's going to be a pretty major teardown. Repairing the shaft should be pretty easy. It'll be a simple weld up and remachine. But getting to that shaft is going to be the problem. This will all have to be removed, I think. Uh, and the other side where the big gear uh, selector arm is, that'll all have to be removed too in order to get this shaft out to repair it. So it's going to require a major teardown. Now, I've never, of course, tore down one of these before, never operated one. Uh, but I'm not too concerned about it. There is, I do have a parts breakdown on this thing, and I get paid in my real job to take apart and repair things that I have never, ever laid eyes on before. So it's not that big a deal. I'm not too concerned about it, but it's just time. So, and, uh, you know, extra work. But it'll give me a good chance to get inside this machine and clean up and assess any other issues that, that you know, it may have. So, sucks for me probably be good video for you guys so you know that's just the way it goes unfortunately when you deal with 70 something year old equipment that often gets abused you find issues usually so that's the case you know it is what it is and we'll have to repair it this off for about three years, well two years anyway. I got this hardwood out of an old farmhouse up the road that they were going to tear down. This is longleaf yellow pine is the wood and uh, the best as I can tell this stuff's not easy to get now. Not because it's great wood but just because it was logged out. And this stuff is hard as glass, a lot of it. It's full of sap so it's pretty good stuff really and uh, it's really pretty it's got a you know, lot of nice grain pattern in it and real tight uh, you know growth growth rings it's old stuff from big trees so it's really nice wood and uh, first time i ever put hardwood floor down yeah i'm just kind of winging it did a little research you know it's got to have room to expand that first run's the hardest one to put down because it's got to be square with the room and stuff and you know getting it nailed up tight all that you know there's an art to it i'm sure and it'll look start looking good by the time i'm done just like everything you do for the first time but uh, it's time i've got three runs down i'm on the fourth so once you start going it goes pretty quick i'm going to take a break though and this hard on the back Well, I'm uh, finally getting this thing cleaned up, and it's looking pretty good, starting to. Uh, man, it was filthy, completely filthy, but just uh, working it a little bit. I got the uh, the uh, rot or the rotor moving, so, I mean, just like I thought, it was just gummed up pretty bad. My son's down there on the porch trying to catch spiders. But... Uh, you know, I've soaked this thing down real good. I would not do this if I wasn't going to completely tear it apart. So, you know, it's got to be clean, though, before you can even really mess with it. This is my break, by the way. 